Listen, ice machines can be shop equipment too. No, we're not looking at a drill or an impact wrench or even a ratchet. This is an ice machine. And if you've ever done without ice, well, it's not a fun thing. Vavor actually reached out to us and said, hey, if we ship you an ice machine, will you tell everybody about it? And we said, we will if it works like it's supposed to and we like it and we do like it. In fact, it's one of my favorite ice machines and I'll explain in detail why and that's just not hot air. And that's obviously my opinion. Your opinion may differ greatly or slightly, but I'll explain why I think that. Yes, uh, we realize that this is not your typical tool that's found in the shop. However, having an ice machine in the shop is a big plus. And we really did need one, or we were actually looking for one uh, when Vavor reached out to us and asked if they could send us one. Um, and in particular, we really wanted something that was like a nugget ice machine like we have here because I'm kind of a big snob when it comes to ice. Um, in fact, let me give you a little ice science really quick. The coldest ice is the ice with the most surface area. Well, I know you're saying, well, frozen water is frozen water. Yes and no. Uh, if you take a, let's say a big ice cube, it's got X amount of surface area. But if you took that same ice cube and you put it in little, little pieces, these little pieces that add up to the same, let's say weight of this big ice cube, you can see where I'm getting at here, has much more surface area around those, and this, in this case, little, little cylinders, so little cylindrical shapes. There's much more surface area to these little pieces than this one big piece. So this big piece will last longer, but these smaller pieces will actually make things colder quicker because, again, there's more surface area to all these little pieces than there's a smaller. Now, the inverse side of that is these are going to melt quicker. So... Yes, arguably that if you're not drinking it quickly, it's going to create water and water down whatever you're drinking. But if you want cold drinks, like I like iced tea, ice cold. I do not like mediocre cold iced tea. So that's why I love uh, these little nugget ice uh, capsules, if you will, versus a big old ice cube. So that's what we're getting here. And also this tends to chew better. It tends to be, it seems like a softer ice. Um, a lot of times you get air trapped in there as well, helps that a little, be a little softer. Um, but this nugget ice, that's where we're getting a colder ice than with a big ice cube. Now we also opted for, rather than like a cabinet machine that would go, you know, on the, on the floor in a cabinet, you know, something that's maybe three foot tall and, and two feet wide, we opted for more of a countertop type of unit that we can move around if we need to, uh, move out of the way if we need to, and this is really a perfect size. By the way, this thing weighs about 38 pounds. Specifically, this is the model number IMN1000-UL, so again, IMN1000-UL. Uh, height on this is 16 and a half inches tall. It is uh, about nine and a half inches wide, and depth on this about 17 inches in depth. You probably want a little more clearance than that. And it's made, or it's it's actually wrapped in stainless steel. I believe it's stainless steel. There's a layer of foam, and then there's food grade ABS plastic on the inside uh, to prevent any you know uh, growth of bacteria and mold mildew things like that. Simple on off button, cleaning button up here. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, also, this little glass look here. This is actually some Lexan where you can see through it. Or, not sure if it's Lexan, but some type of polycarbonate that's translucent and you can actually see through to the bin that's in here. Well, again, we'll get into the details in a moment, but this is the bin. This will make in total about 38 pounds uh, per 24 hour period. Um, so basically it'll make its weight in ice over a 24 hour period. Now this bin here, I believe it's like a 4.8 pound bin. So if you're wanting that 38 pounds, you're not consuming it, then you'll have to actually put it somewhere. So it's it's not going to keep 38 pounds of ice. It will just make that much in a 24 hour period. Also, it's got some sensors in it, so it will read when it's full. When it's full, it will shut off, and then it will basically automatically come back on in eight hours after that. Or if you just come in and you can open the lid, close it, and, uh, and it'll come back on as well. Or push the power button, any of those things will kind of re-energize it to start making ice again. 
but again, if it's full, it won't do that. Now, you will notice over that 24 hour, over that eight hour period when it's off, uh, some of this ice will melt. So it's not the best cooler in the world. You know, it's not a Yeti where it's gonna keep that ice perfect, but you can come in, kind of break it up, and, and it's good to go and good to use. We do that many times where it will actually sit overnight and then the next morning just kind of crunch it up a little bit and it's good to go. Now, the cool thing about this is you can actually put the water in yourself manually, you know, pour it in with a pitcher. Um, and by the way, the capacity is like 2.65 liters and that's almost three quarters of a gallon, 0.7 gallons. And we'll go over that here in a moment as well. And pretty cool pouring feature. Uh, we'll get into that in a moment. Let's take a look at the backside. So you see we have some venting because obviously we have a compressor in here. Um, so we need some air to be circulating in there, fan in there and everything else, keeping everything cool. Take a look at the back. So again, here's our fan. Looks much like a PC fan, and we have a power cord. These are the drain lines. One of these drain lines actually goes to the reservoir where it's holding the water to make the ice, and the other one, I believe, is probably coming off the, uh, the ice plates or where it's actually freezing the ice. So when you're ready to drain this, you just pull these off, lay this down in the sink or lay it outside or wherever, and it will drain out, and you'll drain the, the reservoir as well as any that's, it, that's in the trays as well. Put this back on hangs right there out of the way and nice and tucked in to the back of the unit. The other cool thing is, as I mentioned just a minute ago, is we can manually fill this, but also there's a place right here so you can actually just push in one of your you know, nylon tubes uh, with a water supply, much like you would the ice machine on your refrigerator or the water inlet on your refrigerator, and push that in and it will automatically make your ice without you having to manually fill it. So if you want to run a water line, you can easily do so, and there's really no attachments needed other than just shoving that in, it's gonna lock into place. Now while we're going over these features, let me just go ahead and plug this thing in and we'll get the ice making and see how quick it will do it. In fact, it will actually make a batch in as little as 15 minutes, uh, but of course that batch is not going to fill up this bucket, but let's get some water in here We'll turn this thing on. You can see I've got a blinking light here. It kind of notifies me that it's, that it's actually plugged in. I've got power to it, uh, but we're not making ice just yet. If we take a look with the lid open here, we have two big magnets here, and that's where it actually holds everything closed. So that's cool. There's no really latches, just the magnets that are handling that. And if you see this ridge around uh, the front lid here, that's basically to funnel the water or the channel the water uh, back here into the reservoir. So again, if you're manually filling this, which is what we'll do here in a moment, uh, you don't have to have a funnel or you don't have to you know, reach in there and pour. You can actually leave the bin in place if you want to, pour right here and it channels the water in. I'll be honest, I most of the time just kind of hold the lid like this so I can pour a little quicker, but it's pretty cool that they have that design built into here to keep that water from just running everywhere and it's gonna channel it inside. We'll pull the bin out here. And by the way, the bin has actual holes in the bottom of it. So as that ice melts, it gets back down into the reservoir and can then be recycled into the, into the ice trays. Now this is the reservoir and this little guy right here, if you can see that is a little float switch. So it actually floats up and down uh, with the level of the water, obviously telling the unit how much water is in there and making sure there's enough to make ice. And then back there in the back, that's the actual inlet. It's a little filtered inlet where that's gonna draw the water in or pull the water in and up to the trays to freeze the ice. And up here at the top, obviously that's where the ice is going to drop out and down into the bin. Now I mentioned a moment ago that this holds 2.65 liters uh, to the top. And by the way, this little edge right here is kind of the max fill line. And so you'll see when the water gets up to the lip, then you stop pouring. Uh, I've got most of a gallon here I'm just gonna pour in. And so it should take, again, about 0.75, and I'll leave this flat to kind of show you what I'm talking about. So if you pour pretty slow or at a decent rate, it just channels that water in there and puts it down in the reservoir where it needs to be. And if you want to just pour straight in there, obviously you can do that as well. Or as I was saying, many times I'll just kind of hold it like that, pour it up, and now we see the water is now level with that. And I've got, I don't know, it looks like probably about a quarter of a gallon left, a little less because I didn't have a full gallon to start with. So now we've got water in our reservoir. And by the way, that could have been automatically filled if you had a water line hookup. 
So we've got our unit plugged in. Let's close the front cover and let's turn our unit on. So now we get the solid snowflake emblem and it should start making our ice. And by the way, it is uh, 1.14 p.m. right this second. We just turned it on. So let's see how long it takes before it starts dropping ice. So let's talk a little more while this is actually uh, making the ice. Uh, we have a cleaning button here. If we push the cleaning button, actually we need to hold it for like three seconds. It will go into a cleaning cycle where you could actually add some soap if you want to, and it will actually circulate that water across those trays and from the reservoir and cycling that in and out. Uh, and it lasts about eight to 10 minutes. Then you can drain it, put your fresh water back in. Maybe you want to cycle it again with some fresh water in it, and then you're good to go. So every now and then it can either notify you it needs cleaning, or you can just run that cleaning uh, process and uh, and ensure that everything's nice and clean in there. Also, each time you turn this on, whether it's going off automatically um, or it's actually manually uh, starting when you when you turn it on. Uh, so again, after it sits for eight hours and, and cycles on by itself, it will start a UVC light process, um, which if, if you've ever studied UV light, it does a great job in keeping things nice and clean. Um, but also when you turn it on manually or when it's cycling on, it's going to start that UV light process and automatically do that without you even knowing about it. And when you purchase this, it has a 12 month warranty on it. So they'll cover it for up to a year. And by the way, this thing only runs on 170 Watts. What's that mean? Well, on a 120 volt circuit, you're looking right about 1.5 amps. We know volts times amps equals Watts. So 170 divided by 120 uh, would be less than 1.5. 1.5 would give you 180 watts. So again, you're looking at running this machine on less than 1.5 amps. Now, just like we're seeing an illumination right here, over here uh, we'll also have illuminations of uh, marking whether it's a full basket, uh, uh, also notifying you of whether it's in its cleaning mode or not. Um, so there are some other indicators on here that will show up um, letting you know of what process it's actually in. And that includes a water refill indicator. So if you don't have this automatically set up or into a, uh, a water supply and you're manually filling it like we just did, um, when it gets too low to actually make ice, you'll see a little uh, indicator here that actually flashes, letting you know to refill the water. And one of the other kind of cool things is as you open this lid and it lays out just kind of uh, parallel to the surface, what it enables you to do is to pull this tray out and now it's got a place to sit. So you're never putting this tray on a contaminated surface. So you don't have to set it on the countertop. It's always something on the enclosed side. So again, this is more than just a water channel. You pull your tray out, you scoop your ice out, you put it back in and it's never touched anything else. Okay, it's 127. It's been 13 minutes. I think we heard, yeah, a couple of nuggets have already dropped, so it's starting to make ice already. Uh, again, less than, uh, less than 15 minutes. So right at the 13 minute mark is already starting to drop some ice. And also that's going to compound getting better because when we put things in, the water wasn't all the way to, to temp yet, you know, wasn't cold like it should be. Now, once it's circulating that water through here, it's gonna have colder water and it's gonna continually become more efficient at making that ice once that cold water gets colder. We'll take a look here at the shape of the ice. As I was mentioning, a very cylindrical shape of the ice, a little fogginess, which means there's uh, some air in there. So this is a, uh, again, a very soft ice to chew if you like chewing ice. Now this has been just over an hour. In fact, I think that would be an hour and 10 minutes. And let's see what we've made so far. Yeah, not bad. So it looks like probably a couple of servings of ice there. You get this lovely plastic ice scoop that they throw in for free. No extra charge for this. So yeah, it looks like the first hour, you get a couple of servings. Now keep in mind, as I mentioned, that's going to continually be better because some of that is probably melted off of, um, from it just being, you know, initially warm. Uh, now that everything's cold, this will become more and more efficient. Again, being the ice snob that I am, I just love uh, the feel and the shape and the crunch of this ice and how cold it is.
And this is my go-to here. So some cherry flavoring like you'd put in water, about three squirts of that. And then this is a Spindrift Blood Orange, I think. Yeah, Blood Orange Tangerine. This is about as hard as it gets for me. You know, there's very little of uh, fizzing, so you're not getting rid of that carbonation. You're actually going to taste it and it not go away. If you ever pour over large ice or when things are warm, it'll fizz a lot. Um, so keeping all that carbonation in that beverage. Oh, that's perfect. So it's been four hours since we first started and you can see it's telling, it's giving me the fill sign. So uh, that the reservoir is getting low and I actually had already come out here and opened the door. I wish I wouldn't have. I wish we would have uh, started filming before, uh, but just wanted to give you an update. So it's been about four hours now. The machine had shut off because it actually filled up. So the sensor had noticed that it's up here. Uh, filled with the top so within four hours you're filling that bin and you can see it kind of slopes to the front side if i scoot this down it would uh it would keep making and by the way it gets a little stuck together at the top but you can see you just poking it a little bit and it's uh back loose again and stays nice and cold also the fill is not all the way empty but it's down below that float switch and so it's ready to be filled again Now this light went off and now it's starting to make ice again. Well, listen, if you're looking for an ice machine with a large bin that's going to store the ice as well, this is not the ice machine for you. However, Vivor makes actual, you know, commercial units as well with large ice bins that will store, you know, tens and hundreds of pounds worth of ice after it gets done making it. But I just wanted to be clear with this. Although we love it, it's more of kind of consumption use as, as, you're, uh, as you're making it. You're actually consuming it as well. It will hold about five pounds if you want to store more than that. Again, it's gonna make 38 pounds over the day or over the 24 hours. You will need to store that elsewhere. Price on this is right around the $300 mark and you can purchase it right on Amazon. So many places you may get this next day or within two days. So very easy to get your hands on one of these. And again, you're gonna get a 12 month warranty on it as well. Hey, you can check it out. We'll have a link in the description. Feel free to buy it from there or not from there. We really don't care whatever you want to do. Uh, share with us what you think about ice machines and whether you keep them in the shop or not. Also, keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. And if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, well, give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.